today's video it's all about this angle plate now this is what I call a sacrificial angle plate because you generally have a couple of slots in there and I find that they're never in the right place so what happens with this one I can put holes everywhere I want I can machine spigots I can do all sorts of things with it and when it's like Swiss cheese I just throw it out so put it in the comments do you think those slots or holes in angle plates are always in the wrong place with the sacrificial angle plate I'll be making it out of a disc brake rotor now I'll have lots of metal left over and what I want to try is I've got a range of castings here and I'd like to see exactly what happens now the first thing with these flywheels I gate them from the outside so we'll see if the metal flows to the centre hub and fills them up and also all these castings have to be machined like the flywheel but we've got a real extreme here we've got cylinder covers now they're very small castings and they cool down super quick so they're very prone to chilling so we'll see what happens there and the same with these cylinders these edges on the flanges there they tend to chill there as well and we'll see if they will chill so what I'm trying to do is with the disc brake rotors is to do a maximum range of castings and with extremes and to see exactly what will happen okay this is the angle plate that I'm going to mould I haven't shown you ramming this part up because it's pretty well standard but what's not standard is this part here you've got to dig out where the parting line is around here and then around to the bottom and just keep going until you're finished all the parting lines are trimmed to the correct place I say that tongue in cheek because I never get it perfect the next thing I have to do I have to put a bit of reinforcing in here so that big large lump of sand doesn't drop out on me alright I've got the cope on and I've bedded down the reinforcing piece Whoops it's just sticking in there so what I've got to do now is gently bury it and make sure it's all packed in correctly this is the problem with this box the pins are only about that long and it's got to clear about that much in the depth of that angle plate so this is an old trick I used in one of my earlier videos you put a lump of cast iron here and a lump of cast iron here and what happens is when the pins release as long as you're pushing a little bit in that direction you're lifting it up and you make up for the lack of length of pins and they should guide you until those two boxes are free from the bottom now what should happen is the pattern should stay in the bottom box but doesn't always happen well behave this time the pattern sitting in the top and it'll make it easier to pull out 
Now we just give it a light wrap. And we're ready to lift it out. Hopefully in one piece. There you go. So you see how short the pins are and the function of these two pieces of cast iron. That distance from there to there makes that pin that long. So it makes it so much easier to lift out.
Here's the first mould. It took a considerable amount of metal and I wasn't sure how much it was going to take but it did take a lot more and that's why I ran out towards the end. This one wasn't quite enough metal and there were two moulds left over. This is the third disc brake rotor melt and the wedge test from it. And what happened last time I used less ferrosilicon and this time I went back to the original mount. We'll see if it's all grey. So here we go with this test. As you can see there's a little bit of white in the bottom of the wedge test which suggests that smaller castings on the edge it may have a bit of a chill on which is a dis disappointment but we'll see what happens when I machine the castings well this is the angle plate mould we put it in the sand mixer and we'll pull it out and we'll see what it looks like There we go, it looks okay so far. We'll clean it up and we'll see what it looks like. This is the mould with the cores, we'll have a look at it. So I've got the core butts, we always pull them out first. As you can see, watch the sand just fall out of there. This is resin bonded sand. The cores break up really easily. The same the other side there. Look at that, it just comes out so easy. These are the smallest castings I've cast with disc brake rotors. We'll knock out the mould and we'll see how it turns out like. We'll see when I put them in the lathe, we'll see how they machine out like, whether they're going to be soft or hard. Here is the angle plate casting, it's all been cleaned up, and what we'll do, we'll flip it over, you can have a look inside it. But we'll show you something, now have a look, there's the top of the riser. And from there to there is only 25 millimetres. That's all that's needed to fill up that mould. And no air vents. And that's still filled up. You would think that the air pressure would be squashed up in there and it stopped the metal from flowing to the very top. But it still fills up the mould because the sand breathes. If the sand doesn't breathe, you're not going to get the mould filling up. As you can see in the previous video clip, these castings were machined, all four of them, and boy oh boy, it revealed some horrible problems there. As you can see here, it's very chilled on the edge. So, if I was a gambling man, that edge there, I'd put all my money on it and say that would be chilled as well. But we'll go and have a look at that edge and also this edge as well and we'll see how badly chilled it is. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I think you'd be surprised as well as I was. There's no chill whatsoever on that edge or on that edge. So what I'll do, I'll have a close-up of these edges here and also this edge just in here and we can have a look at a closer look at it and we'll see some surprises there. Here is a close-up of that cylinder cover. There's the chilling either side. Now have a look from here to here. There's no chilling whatsoever. So what happens is this is the in gate and as the metal keeps flowing in it's preheating all this area so it's hotter than it is over in other parts of the mould. So what happens? In the end there's no chill whatsoever here and that chills on these parts here. So it brings an interesting question there. Can you use cast iron without ferrosilicon? Well yes you can. If you preheat this mould you can actually pour the cast iron in and you won't get any chill on there. So you don't need ferrosilicon. But the problem is with this cast iron in the mould you've got to preheat it to about say 400-500 degrees C which can be a nuisance and this is a smaller mould. But on the other hand if you've got a really thin casting that won't fill up the mould if you preheat it it will actually fill up the mould with cast iron and also it will not chill because it's going to cool very slowly. Actually there is another method where you don't have to preheat the mould. So what you can do that's the in gate and if you have another gate on the other side where the metal can exit you can pour it for probably about five seconds so it preheats your mould then you have an assistant to shut off your exit gate and then you'll have casting that won't have any chill on it. But yeah, you can see that that's not a real good idea but if you haven't got any ferrosilicon it's probably a way out. So why did the cylinder covers chill so much and yet the flanges on the cylinder they were chill free? Well this will give a bit of an answer You have a look at that weight, it's 1,013 grams. Now when we put the cylinder cover on, it's about five and a half times the difference. So what happens is the cylinder is going to cool so much slower than the cover does. And it's the reason why it's not chilled. Here is the cylinder cover. Now I've broken it in half and I'll do a close up and we can see exactly what's going on and see how important that gate preheats the sand in the mould. Here is the casting, it's been broken in half. And you can see this is where the gate was as the metal's flowing over the area where the gate is, it's preheating the mould and have a look, absolutely no chill whatsoever. So if you preheat a mould or let the mould flow out for a certain amount of time you can get away with not using ferrosilicon. But you look at the other side, there's a lot of chill on that edge there and a lot on there as well. And this is where the machine surface is and when you see that you can expect a lot of trouble when you machine your castings. But when you break open castings like that it's very very interesting. You can see exactly what's going on and you can learn a lot about cast iron metallurgy. Now we'll have a quick look and see what happens when you machine a soft metal with a hard metal. See the feel like gauge going in there? It won't go to the edge. So the soft cast iron machines and it tends to deflect off the really hard white cast iron. And the same with this one here. Come on. Yep. It does the same thing. So it's very hard to get a flat surface, so these castings are reject. I've machined these two castings and I know they are both rejects. This one here came from the same batch, no need to machine it, it'll be chilled on the edge, so I know that is a reject. But can you reclaim rejects? Well yes you can. And how I've done it years ago, in my lounge room there's a wood heater. And what I do is you stoke up a really hot fire, and then you throw the castings on top and as the wood burns you just keep throwing wood on top 
so the casting get buried and they're glowing a nice orangey red color you keep that up for about three or four hours and then let it cool down very slowly overnight and next morning you have got some annealed castings and you're able to machine that hard spot but the interesting part about it is it doesn't look like that ordinary grey cast iron it's still got that white mottled colour there but it's very soft so with failures with these castings so what I'll do in the future I'll be having some more goes at um, casting these covers and we'll see if we can get some real soft cast iron out of them I was going to machine this angle plate in this video but I got a bit distracted with the cast iron metallurgy so what I'll do the very next video will be machining this angle plate and it should be a very interesting video